Mercury is moving around, but this time it's not going backward. No. Oh, it's going golly. forward. Where's it going? Yay, it's going from the sign of Taurus where it went backwards for the last two months into the sign of Gemini. And wherever Mercury goes, Mercury represents our conscious mind. We are mm -hmm. consciously aware of things. Um, and Gemini is communication. So it's about communication, but in different areas depending on your sign. So for Mercury, uh, for Gemini's, Mercury is their ruling planet. It's in their sign. And, and they are going to be even more communicative if that is possible. More about the I, I, I and the me, me, me and the I think, I think, I think to where we finally just go, please, that's enough already. Um, for Cancers, it's in their 12th house. Cancers have to be really careful not to shoot themselves in their own feet. That they have to be careful because they'll say things without thinking about it. And then their own words will come back to do them in. And Cancer, i got to tell you, if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. Is really good advice in this particular case. For well, Leos, go. it's a very good time for Leos. Uh, Mercury is in their 11th house of hopes, wishes, goals, and objectives. And it's going to take two, because Gemini is a sign of duality, two of their well-placed friends to go to bat for them to get the Leo what the Leo says that they want. And Leo's been a little concerned because things have not been quite right, but all of that straightens out over the next two weeks ago. They have a very clear understanding of who their friends are and aren't, and they will help them reach that goal or objective. For Virgo, it's about two different jobs, doing two different jobs at the same time. Um, and Virgo, the Virgo dream is to do a job once and get paid for it twice. Mm -hmm. I don't think that happens, but I think the Virgo takes on a second job, an ancillary job that just puts money in their pocket and gives them something to do with their conscious mind is what I think. For Libras, legal, educational matters, the law, important matters at a distance are very, very favorable for Libras. They're in a good place to negotiate contracts. They're in a good place to sign things and, and legal. And yeah, as I always feel, when the law is on your side, you want to use it either directly or indirectly. Um, and Libras get to use it indirectly. For Scorpio, it's about counting up your nickels and dimes and realizing that nickels and dimes eventually end up being quarters and dollars. And that's the thing that Scorpios just don't get there. They need to take a look at the big financial picture, not the small individual one, and see what they can do to maximize their existing resources rather than look for new ones. For Sagittarians, it's in their seventh house of open enemies and potential partners. And Sagittarius are in the process of trying to pick up a new partner, either professionally or personally. And they have to be really careful to discern the difference between what somebody says and what somebody really can deliver. There'll be a lot of, oh, I could do this and that, but... Sagittarians really need to be discerning as to whether somebody can really deliver what they say they can deliver. For Capricorns, it is in their sixth house of work, and they, too, have taken on two different jobs. And, and to the Capricorn, I say, do both jobs until somebody tells you otherwise. Um, and instead of waiting for permission, just go ahead and do it. At the end of three weeks or so, you'll find that you've made a very favorable impression and probably end up getting the job that you've been doing and actually get paid for it, which would be a cool thing instead of just doing the job. For Aquarians, favorite time of year, it is the most fun time of year to be an Aquarian. It's a time for amusements and pleasures and sports and entertainment. And anything that's fun um, is on the Aquarian agenda. Um, and it's a good time for Aquarians to fall in love with someone or thing. And also a good time to take a child of your mind and give birth to it. To turn what could be a, um, an avocation into a vocation. For Pisces, they really want to stick pretty close to home. They've got something going on at home. No one's telling them the truth. They're getting two or three different stories. And until that straightens out and they know which story is real, which probably won't be for a month or so, they should just be gathering information and not make any kind of decisions. For Aries, it's in their third house of day-to-day -day living. And they have got places to go and people to see and things to do. And the pace of that life is about to pick up. So they're going to have to very carefully budget and manage their time so they don't fall behind the power curve. And then for the last sign, Taurus, it's about making more money. It's about making more money using their words, using their mind, rather than their bodies. It's a matter of, of and, and they need to ask for it. Because they've been doing a lot of work for free, and if they mm -hmm. ask, the people would pay them. Uh -huh. So in one way or the other, but the gem about the Taurus has to actually ask about it, and they'll find that they, uh, people are more than willing to help them out financially. So I don't think that's bad news for anybody. That's tomorrow's news today. For the 12 signs of the zodiac. Sounded pretty good to me. We will I see you so. next week. Always a pleasure.